Greetings sculptors and welcome to part two of our animal sculpting series. Uh, today uh, we are going to be talking about massing out the three major, uh, the three major forms. All right? So that's going to be the rib cage, the pelvis, and the head. And very similar to when we're working with a hu uh, human being. Right. Uh, so uh, you can see I cleaned up my area a little bit um, and moved things around. Sort of the things that I needed for making the armature are a little bit different than the things that I need for uh, clay modeling. Uh, for these early uh, parts of the of the sculpt, um, I obviously need some calipers. Uh, I need something to measure with uh, here. Uh, for for sculpting, I, I always prefer to have a ruler. Oh, and I'm surprised this doesn't say clay only. Um, frequently in my studio, I have rulers like this, and some of them will say clay only uh, on the back. Uh, it's kind of obvious, but um, I like the flat rulers because I can lay them down and, and just very quickly take you know, measurements as I need them, as opposed to uh, some type of tape measure. Um, I also have a couple of tools, uh, a couple of loops, a larger loop, more important for, uh, for, for these major forms, my regular loop tool and a, um, a wood tool. Uh, maybe my, my pliers, in fact, I might actually just put those down here. Uh, those might be helpful if I decide that I need to trim or I want to extend something out. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, I also have my computer over here right, with uh, my skeleton image uh, loaded up in Photoshop. Uh, I have my, my, my notes right, and some of my numbers. Um, uh, a calculator because I'm using my phone in order to uh, to film this, so I can't use my phone uh, calculator because right, I'm actually using it. All right. Uh, so yeah. So let's uh, let's 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 get started. Right. Talking about those 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 three ma major forms. So like I said, rib cage, pelvis, head. Uh, the other major forms are uh, the two. In the case of the animal, it's the four the two forelegs and the two and then the two um, hind legs. Right? And we can continue to break down the forms. So you know, as you get into you know the paws, there's going to be major forms in here. Right? But right now we're going to you know it's going to be big, it's going to be simple, and it's about going to be about getting these things correct. Right? This is even before um, you know kind of posing it. So I'm I'm, I'm going to just do it sort of um, to get started. I'm just going to do it um, you know get the the shapes kind of correct. Right? So uh, um, I'm going to show you. Uh, well, I'm not really going to show it to you because um, I'm filming it in this way, but I'll just sort of explain it out. Uh, one of the things that I do with, with my images, or that I've been doing more recently, right, is to use Photoshop and use Photoshop's ruler tool. Right? So Photoshop has a ruler tool. I don't know how much other people use it. I feel, I feel like it would not be that useful um, for, I, I don't know, I don't know what other people do. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I use it though to measure parts of an image. So. I know, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. Uh, some of the math that I did for my animal prior, I, I decided to change. So uh, the overall length, and this is the length of the body from the tip of the head to the back of the hind part. So remember, this, this doesn't go that far, right? So you know, the, our, our glute muscles are gonna come around like this, right? And the front of our snout is gonna be uh, a little bit farther forward. Um, the average was uh, um, thir three, Three feet seven inches to four eleven. Uh, so I decided to go with about fifty one inches. Uh, the math is kind of nice on that um, as a sort of mid size uh, cat, and um, and so that means that she's going to be seventeen inches long. Okay. So what I did in my in Photoshop over here is I went and I resized my canvas and resized the image, so you can see here that the skeleton fits the entire image. So I made my canvas size seventeen inches. Right? And so the canvas is 17 inches, and now my, um, my skeleton is there for the, the, the part, including some space over here for the glute muscles, right? and a little bit extra for the, for the nose there. That, um, so that's my 17 inches. So now I can use this ruler tool to go, and I just measured the, um, the, my rib cage, and it's telling me that my rib cage is 5.465 um, inches long. I have mine set for inches because that's what I work with. Right, so now what I can do, right? Oh, and then so that what I said five. Well, we're going to call that five and a half, right? So I can take this piece of clay here, which I was already kind of messing around with a little bit. All right, hold my ruler kind of over here, right? And I know that's about five and a half inches, right? And then we can also kind of do this side as well. So there's two sides, that's about it. And then I can measure it again, 
from the top to the bottom, and it's going to tell me that it's about 4.7 inches, so a little, a little less than 5 on that one. All right, so this would be a little bit small, but it's enough to kind of get started. Now, how far out does it go? All right, so uh, half of um, 17 is 8.5. So that's about four and a half. So about four and a half back, about four and a half back, right? This is where my rib cage is gonna start, right? So what I'll do is I'll actually just put a little bit of clay here to kind of start my rib cage, right? Way back here. And then I knew that it was going to be uh, five and a half back from that. And so it goes to about here. So this is, um, the next piece of my rib cage, all right? All right. Now I, I want, remember your, your, your scapula, which is these, these parts really represent our scapula, sit outside of that form, all right? Very kind of loose initially. I'm just trying to get some material on there. I'm building that up a little bit. I'll show you. Build it up a little bit more on this back side. I had a question in one of my other classes about the clay the other day. Uh, um, I realize I don't always fully explain how to warm up the clay. I warm up my clay in a microwave. Um, you have to be very careful. You can very easily overheat the clay in the microwave. So I warm my clay up in the microwave, and it works really good. I have a, um, I have a dedicated clay microwave that is only for that. Um, and then I have a separate studio at my house where I have a second dedicated microwave just for clay and clay only. Don't always, don't always talk about that. I have, I have, this is my studio, which is my primary studio, but I do occasionally bring work home. And so I have a small, uh, you know, I have an area set aside in the basement of my home where I can work on projects. So, you know, I have children and whatnot. And, Life doesn't always allow me to just spend all of my time in the studio. Now, <laughs> that's kind of a that, that's a, that's a subject there. You know, being an artist and having children and family and a life and everything, right? So, you know, as as important as art is, um, it is it is still you know it's a function. It's part of our larger life, and right? you got to learn how to manage. You gotta learn how to manage your life as well as your, um, your, your artistic practice and your career. All right, All right. We're gonna pause there for a quick second because I gotta get some more clay. Back with some nice warmed up clay. Like I said, a ball about this size, if you have a dedicated clay, do not put this clay in the oven that you cook your food in. Right? It, my clay oven stinks like this clay and you don't wanna, you just don't wanna be doing that. Um, but a ball of clay about this size, I put in for a minute if I want if I'm massing it up. So notice how soft it is right now because I'm massing up the form. So I want it really sort of soft. And that's the real benefit of working with an oil clay like this, which has some wax in it, that, um, uh, that it, it's, it's what I would call temperature sensitive, right? So it, uh, at certain points in time, it is 
uh, it's, it's harder. And a lot of times when people, when students start working with this, they're like, oh, this clay's so hard. And yeah, that's, a, that's one of its great features is that when it's cooler, it's very hard. Right? And, that, uh, and when you're working with it, what you want is you want the, the material to gradually get harder as you, as you sculpt on it. So things that you put on previously are going to be um, harder than things that you're working with pres you know, presently, as it kind of sort of almost sets up. But then you could heat it back up again. But hopefully if your primary forms were done a long time ago, they're nice and cool deep on the inside holding their shape. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna take a quick measurement here. And so I said it was gonna be about five and a half. Okay, so, so about five and a half that way. I don't have a, a width, but um, one of the things that I remember from being at the zoo was that, uh, and, and watching the animals, uh, and when I came back and looked at my sculpt, uh, I accidentally made my, my cheetah too, um, too wide. And so um, I'll just sort of looking. They were, they were far thinner than I expected them to be. And so I want to be sort of careful to get a kind of a roundness here without, without overdoing it. And I'm eventually going to kind of twist this up to the side here. So maybe I'll start to give that a little bit of that, some of that twist. And there's that bottom paw that's going to be coming down. And it's going to be sort of tan. And now you can see. So see if maybe I can tip this up a little bit. See how I have my rib cage you know, is, is in the center. And these are free, right? So that means that I'll be able to adjust my scapula to move them around as I see fit um, without them kind of... You know, things getting in the way. Okay, let's go back and take a look at this little tiny pelvis. All right, so this little pelvis here. All right, so if you've seen my videos or worked with me before on figure sculpture, you know that I, I conceptualize the rib cage as an ovoid form. All right, and we're going to go back to this one. Um, the 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 rib cage of the of, of the cheetah is going to be a, a it, it's still it's, it's it's a little bit more of a squarish form. It feels like 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 the, the rib cage got kind of compressed here, and as it did, it kind of grew out this way. So it's still going to be a rounded form, but it's but it's much sort of thinner like this, right? Um, in addition to that, the um, let me get this up a little bit again, um, you know, but it's still going to have that shape, anyways. Um, the pelvic form, right, although very different, we're still going to understand as a square, a square, right? So when you look at the pelvis of the human being, right, it's basically a square box. That square box has a tilt to it on the human. The square box on, uh, on an animal is going to be the same thing, right? So I'm going to look at that squarishness. About three and a half by about two and a half. Right? And I need it to sit right, up like this, and it's gonna join my hips together. Right? So I'm gonna make sort of one there. Right? And then I'm gonna make another one kind of, you know, I'll measure this. I think that's about three and a half by about two and a half. I'm gonna stick that one on this side. Right? And like that, and then it's going to have some material in between. Now, how hard I push on these right, is, is going to determine kind of where my legs are sort of sticking out. Right. Right. right now, this clay is very sort of warm and squishy, right? but uh, there's the one leg I'm coming through like that. Here's the other one. So when I do a gesture sketch of an animal, I, I do it in the same way, right? You can actually already see a little bit of that kind of that, 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 that gesture kind of coming through here, Right. 
kids a little bit more. Okay. So eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this, the, the back kind of coming up like this and my spine will come down like this right? and then the back legs will go and when you shape those on there. Mm -hmm. So the front of our cheetah head, right, I'm just going to put this on here. I'm going to get a little bit of kind of some direction going there. sculpting the other one I was thinking that I was like thinking oh I keep feeling like my head looks really tiny oh that's because she just kind of have you know, tiny little heads or at least in my sort of kind of understanding of them they, they looked kind of tiny that. Add a little bit more here. This way. Bring it down like that. You can see even sort of how as, as I'm putting it on there, I'm kind of, you know, looking a little bit for the kind of the general kind of shape of the head. not trying to put any kind of details on right? so you know if I'm putting in a little something that looks like a, a little bit of an eye socket it's maybe just so I can help to get a better sort of center line. I want to keep it get that center line on there fairly quickly. All right, All right so now I want to spend a little bit of time oops I did have another image back here Like I said, very, 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 very thin. All right, so I'm gonna try to shape this around. All right, I'm gonna try to get the the I'm try, gonna try to get that rib cage form to be even on both sides. Now, it's, this is this is kind of difficult in certain ways because this side of the um, of the cheetah right is 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 so much more exposed. All right, so there's gonna be a tendency. And there's going to be a tendency for me to want to favor the, the easier side, right? That makes sense, doesn't it? would be like, oh, I'll just keep sculpting on this one side because if I just keep looking at that side, it looks great. Right? But this side for me um, is already starting to get a little neglected. And so I want to go back. And it's super important when we're sculpting really anything that we don't over, and this is just a general art lesson, I guess, you know, it's, it's super important that we don't over focus on uh, on an area right so you do a really great portrait uh, or, or you're drawing a portrait and, and you just really start to nerd out on this one particular eye and you know you, you draw this beautiful eye and it's so perfect but then you realize because it's all you've been doing is focusing on that one eye that your one eye is actually in the wrong place and what do you think the chances are that you're gonna move that perfect eye that you did, that was you know, the best eye you've ever drawn. And you know, what do you think that the chances are that you're gonna move that uh, at that point in time? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I, I think that I see it all the time that, that that doesn't happen. And the result is, is that then people try to adjust everything around that one thing. If you gradually build something up, meaning, you know, if you're doing a drawing, you start at the top and you, you know, take everything to, I'm, I'm not saying like, like a typo, but you know, once you get all your forms in and everything, if you then, you know, you know, kind of move through the, the entire drawing um, and take everything to 50% and then you kind of go back up and you, you kind of move through and take everything to 60%. You know, I think that that is a better approach than trying to, and you, you'll always see like those, those, those kind of, there's those people out there that can just, you know, start in one corner and draw something 100%, like all the way down to the bottom. Um, you know, if, if you're that person, you're probably not watching videos about how to make art. You just you just do it, so you don't have to really worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, you know, very there are very few people in our society that are like that, but they're out there and they're incredible and whatnot. But uh, so you can see, I'm feeling like these two sides are a little bit more even now, right? So you can see that, that same principle I was just talking about. I, 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 I started with the with my rib cage. Now there's always this kind of question about like where you start, right? As in you know, on any project, you know, you know, some people say you should always start with the head, and you know, some people say, it's, it's, there's not really kind of a one size fits all. Um, for me, as a sculptor, because of the um, you know the kind of the technical demands of, of, of physical material, it's easier to, to you know, get this, this cent central area done first. So when I approach drawing, I approach drawing in the same way. I draw, you know, I draw like a sculptor. You know? um, I build things up. I'm very constructivist uh, in that way. And that's just, that's just my approach because of this. But the same thing I was just talking about, I. I worked on with the rib cage first, and then I moved to the pelvis, and then I moved to the head. And let's say I took each one of those to like, I don't know, I'm just using make believe math here, but uh, um, uh, I took each one of those to like 5%. Right? And so um, then I went back to my rib cage, and now I'm taking my rib cage to, let's just again, sort of fake math, I'm taking it to 10%. Right? And when I get my rib cage to what I think is 10%, is a little bit more evened out. Right, you can guess where I'm going. I'm going back to the pelvis. Right, when I go back to the pelvis, then I'm going to take that one, but not farther than I've taken this one. Right. And then when I, uh, you know, and then after that, go back up and take the head a little bit further. I think at that point I'll probably try to join these forms together and add the spine. Right. The spine is also, you know, some people call the spine also a major form. I, I, I see the spine more as the the thing that connects and ties the major forms together. It's, it's just all, you know, all this stuff is just kind of how you see it. You don't have to. I think what's more important is not like how, you know, I'm trying to, you know, I'm making a video to show you how to do things here. You know, but um, for me, um, it's, it's, it's ultimately really about how you think about it. Right? You know, how, how do you conceptualize it in your own mind? You know, it doesn't matter. Like, in my in my drawing class, my students, my drawing class, my students like to make fun of me uh, in, a, in a in a positive way because because a lot of times I describe shapes as these like sound effects, you know. So like, you know, I, you know I, this is going to have like a swoop, you know, whoosh, like this, like that. That's that that whoosh, and that swoop. You know, those are set, those sound effects in my mind are how I think about things. So it doesn't matter if this is a or a it doesn't it doesn't matter because when I it matters in my mind, right? and so you know different people you know see things in different ways. So you hear about some people some people you know see colors and um, you know and in, 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 in different ways or in, you know associate things with music or sound. Like for me, I'm, I'm very form oriented and I'm very um, and I'm very sound oriented. So. You know, and, that, and that's, that's, that's what works for me. You know, I think it is important, you know, that, um, I think it's important that you find something that works for you, right? So look, 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 what, look what just happened, right? Because I'm talking.
doing a little too much, right? I'm just talking too much. 2.6, right? I'm not really, I'm, I'm just sort of, I just, I just got, did one of the things I'm talking about. I, I'm not paying attention to the shape of my rib cage. The front of the, of the rib cage on uh, where, where his sternum, or her sternum will be, uh, on, on the cheetah rises up. Right? And I just, so I just measured that distance, and it's 2.6, right, so, yeah, look at, look at, look at that, look at that. Yeah, that's what happens when you get kind of talking a little too much, right? right, I lost a little bit of my shape, right, pardon me for a minute, I'm going to get a knife and I'm going to cut that off. All right, back with my, <laughs> my students, sometimes in the past I've made fun of my, my tool and call, called this my prison shank. Um, this is a um, an old um, like a cutting knife that I um, like a kitchen knife, and I, I ground it down into a shape that's very usable for me, um, and it's not sharp, which is important because you know the clay doesn't need it to be sharp, right? So I'm gonna move this arm up and out of the way, right? and then I'm gonna make sure I cut this right. This side now. Let's see about there. Maybe I will. It's tempting to try to just smush the clay all around, which is sometimes okay. Um, those, some of those techniques work work a little bit better with with water-based clays. Uh, with the oil clay, it doesn't it doesn't really work that well to um, to try to like smush the whole thing. I find it's much better to um, you know, put the clay on where you want it, and take the clay off where you don't want it, and that's sort of the way that I work. Put on sort of small little dabs. Be in control of the entire process. Don't don't try to guess. I talked about this before, but you know people. A lot of times when when people don't know what they're doing, um, when they don't know what they're doing, or they don't meaning they don't understand the form that they're looking at. Right? They, there's a tendency to just kind of keep um, keep smushing the clay around and. You know, as if you're waiting, like you don't know, you don't understand the forms of an eye. But if you just keep kind of smushing the clay around, or pushing the charcoal around, or moving the paint around, um, you know, there's a there's an inevitability that at you know, or maybe there's a some sort of statistical probability that 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 at some point, you know, if you push it around enough, the eye will actually appear. And a lot of times, what's happening is people are are just pushing the stuff around. Waiting for that thing, waiting, waiting to, waiting to find it. You know, and you hear, you hear that kind of line where people say, "I'm, oh, I'm trying to, trying to find this thing in there." I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I think that, I think that scientists go out into the field and they kind of know what they're looking for. Right? You know, so maybe you do. You, you know, you, there are still, you know, some happy accidents. You know, you can come across something. You know, you're looking for, um, you know, you're looking for a. I don't know, a, a dinosaur and you accidentally find a woolly mammoth, you know, um, you know, that can happen. There's no doubt about that. But you do know that, you know, you know you're, still, you're still looking for that dinosaur. You know? You know, so for me, um, I have a fairly good sense of what it is that I'm looking for. Uh, and so, you know, um, or not what I'm, uh, what I'm <laughs> let, me, let me say that again, right? Um, I, I, I know what it is that I'm, I'm, I'm shaping. Right? So I can look at this thing and say, this, this needs clay here. Right? This needs clay right here. So here so I'm trying to kind of make that sternum kind of feature there. Right? I have to get down here a little bit to kind of do this. Right? Again, when I get down low like this, I can see that my rib cage again is a little not even. Right? So 
It needs to come back up a little bit on this side. Right? It's a little too pointy kind of down there. Now remember, I'm, I'm just trying to get, I'm just trying to get the form to look right and to be the right proportions, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to sculpt ribs. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, I don't need to make a big opening in here for the, for the cheetah's belly. I'm trying to get it to look symmetrical on both sides and, um, and, and to look, you know, like the overall shape of this, of this rib cage. Mm. And I'm probably gonna have to go back, uh, and I'll, I'll go back to it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go back now and I'm gonna check my measurements on this guy. That's why I measured it kind of down. That's a little small this way. I might build some of that up with my. Um, it's a, right, so it's a, it's a little bit small, but I'm gonna leave it that way because I'm gonna build some of it up around when I put the spine on there. All right. So now we're going to go in and we're going to refine this pelvis a little bit more. All right, so the top here, these sort of uh, points up here. And those are what, you, what you're really going to see when you're looking at the chia. Right. This kind of comes back. Right. And this part right here, this is this is our greater trochanter, right? Somewhere around here. Right, so kind of build sort of some of that shape up. I'm allowing there to be a little bit of kind of excess material down here um, because that'll help kind of hold the structure. because I really don't have a really good width, I'm gonna go back. Um, this one was done from observation, right? So we'll bring our other guy kind of over here. Oops. Right, so, right, you can see that, uh, well, I'll show this, all right? So you can see that, hopefully that that works well. All right, so you can see that kind of squareness in the uh, in the cheese pelvis there. Right? And from my observations, um, these parts right, came in closer, right? and I'm going to use this one over here to get my measurement. Right? So let me see how we'll do this. So that one is. We're going to call that about 1.8 inches. Right? So. This was a quarter inch scale, so 1.8 times 4 equals 7.2 divided by 3 equals 2.4. So I scaled it up to the full size and then scaled it back down. And that has to come in quite a bit. So my box had gotten way too wide. Well, maybe it's actually just needs to come in just on this side. We'll do that. This one. And, and like I said, I, th I, I think that actually at this point in time, this is a good time for me to put that spine in. Right? 
So my cat is going to have this big kind of arch and then it kind of comes up. So it's going to, it's going to come up like this and then it's going to go down. I think my head might need to come up just a little bit. And actually what I should do is open up my lower set. That's kind of the one that I'm working from the most right there. And so you can see that big arch coming up. And so the arch is actually farther back from the rib cage. Right, so I'm gonna have some excess material here. You know, I might actually, um, I believe actually we need to pause here because I don't have enough clay to do this. So um, uh, why don't we take a, a break? I'm gonna go round up some more clay and stick it in the oven. Um, we'll come back and we'll start to build that spine. put some of the spine on here, right? I gotta be careful. Some of this clay that I have has some styrofoam in it. So you see little white um, bits in there. Recycling this clay off of a, uh, another sculpt. There's a considerable amount of space in between there, right? And this is this form is kind of hanging out here in space. That's why I want to kind of put a little bit. So I'm not I'm not sculpting a spine here per se, um, as much as I'm sort of making a kind of column that's connecting all of this. Okay, so some of that is some structure, right? but some of it is um, you know representing the spine. So once I have kind of some of that core material in there, and I don't want a lot because I don't want to get in the way of the division between the legs back here. And in fact, actually, I should probably go back in and make sure that that maintains. Let's so sort of cut that apart a little bit there. Get these bottom parts of the pubic bone down here like this. And giving that sort of the, maintaining that square shape. Right. So as I'm doing this, I'm kind of getting farther and farther along. Right. So I want my cheetah to have a little bit of twist. Right. So if the, I want the back legs to kind of be a little bit more kind of like this. Like, I'm sorry, I want the whole thing over kind of like that. But I want the back legs to kind of be up a little bit more. Right, and kind of. Something like that. I don't want it all in a straight line. And so, as you put more and more material on, you've got to be more and more conscious of that. Right. Now, so here's here's kind of a fun sort of little bit. You know, as you talk about, you know, we we like to think, right? We like to think that that our bodies, our animal bodies, um, have an unlimited set of possibilities, right? But, and, and, that's, and that's wonderful, you know, we, we, we want to feel like there's unlimited possibility, but in reality there isn't, and from a maker's point of view, um, you don't really want there to be unlimited possibilities, right? Because that makes it harder for you to wrap your head around, you know, the infinite number of possibilities. So when it comes to the ribcage pelvis and the, and the head, the reality is, is that, that they can only do three different things, right? So uh, as an animal or as a human, right, we can bend like this and this, there's one, right? We can bend like this and like this, that's two. And then, right, as I always said, when we get really crazy, right, we can go like this and like this. Right? So you can go in forward and back, side to side, and we can twist. And all the different things that our, our body can do, or our torso can do, are a function of a combination of those three things. You know, so, you know, again, you know, it feels, you know, when we're out on the dance floor, it feels like unlimited possibilities. However, in reality, it's not. And, and I think that in terms of being a maker, in terms of being a maker and trying to wrap your head around various things, 
right? it's easier for us right? it's easier for us if there are less things right? so right now I'm thinking about um, I'm th as the cheetah goes like brings its hips up what it's really doing is it's doing this kind of bend right? so it's going like this and so that's that's kind of what I'm getting. So the, the the rib cage I feel actually needs to tilt down a little bit more, and that's why I left my rib cage a little bit smaller. And the rib cage needs to be kind of tilting down more, and then it's compressing and pulling its pelvis in like like this. And so it's going to make a big kind of C shape. Mm -hmm. Right? And then there's going to be, um, is there, you know, as it's running, is you know, it's it's running kind of in a straight line, but some of the other ones that I have. Right, where the cheetah is running more on a curve, right, it's going to have a, a curve to it as well. Right, so it's going to have a, um, a curve. And then in addition, I think that, you know, I'm going to try to make my cheetah kind of like it's like, like its back legs are almost kind of like bulging up on it. Well, I'm going to fall over, you know, you know, kind of, you know, like it's going to topple itself over. And that's going to be a little bit of a twist. And so I'm thinking about those three different things. But because there's only three of them, it's not all that hard to wrap my head around. Right? You know, I'm not the smartest guy out there, but I think that I could hang on to three different things at once. That's not, that's not too difficult. You can see there on the, um, let's see if I can tilt this a little bit. You can see on the spine there, I'm, I'm building up a little bit of that spine because that spine goes through the, um, pelvic floor. Right? So I start to bring that over and as I'm trying to get that spine to make that curved shape that I want. Let's look at the different cheetahs here. Right? So that's a good one there. Right? So more of the curvature is kind of up in this area. So I can keep building that up until I, see, until I get that in the right place. I wish I had a camera kind of up here like that, right? Because there's that, that's that angle that I'm going to have to bring that out there. Right. Right. I'm staying super rough. I'm not interested in refinement. I'm not interested in having a refined form at this point. I'm just really interested in getting the shapes to be um, to be the right set of shapes, right? to be the right set of shapes that look correct to me and are going in the right directions. <laughs> and that's a hard one, to, you know. I, I think that as as we're when we're learning to sculpt, it's it's really it's really difficult because you know you want your thing to look good, you know. And and I think it's not it's about learning to to understand how this looks good. I think that that's really kind of part of it, you know. I'm always taking, I, I, I had the, I, I, I don't know, the privilege or what, but I, I had the opportunity to take a workshop with Jeff Watts. Um, you know, in my mind, you know, one of the, you know, arguably one of the, the greatest drawing teachers ever. Um, you know, it's fantastic, absolutely, like, just, just knew so much. And, um, and I remember one, one of many things that, that he said that really kind of stuck with me. Um, I only took a, I did a, like a, it was like a drawing intensive workshop. Um, uh, great, great, great experience. But um, one of the thing, the many things that he said that, that really stuck with me was that uh, he said, and I'm kind of paraphrasing, and, uh, but he said that, um, that, that the drawing should look good at every stage. And I remember at the time, having had drawing teachers when I had been in college before that, who said, you know, oh, well, you know, sometimes it's okay if the drawing looks bad at this stage. And, and so his saying that just totally flew in the face of that, um, that idea. No point should your drawing or your sculpt ever look bad to you. If it does, you've already lost, you know? And, and so um, for me, I'm already, I'm really digging on this so far. You know, you might be looking at it and thinking, oh, that looks really rough, I don't like it, but I'm, I'm actually really loving what I'm seeing. Right? I'm starting to get into this sort of the movement of the spine. Right? I'm getting a little bit of an S shape here, which, which really kind of resonates with me quite a bit. I like how I can feel, I, again, I'm feeling like 
and this sounds kind of funny, but you know, I, I feel like I feel like it's like if you were holding your cat here like this, and they took their bottom and you kind of pushed like this up like that, and they were they, and they crunched up. Right? That's that's the feeling that I'm getting. All right. So now to kind of extend, I'm going to bring some of the the, the spine and the neck here, sort of over here. So I can give so you know, I got this wonderful shape that's coming in here, and you know, and my cat like the the antelope is the antelope has been like kind of running this way, right? It's, so this is this is what happens, you know. As soon as you start getting these things working, you start to get narrative, right? So the the antelope's been running like this, right? And and it's and it's going in this direction, right? Because they're, they're circling around like this, and so so my my cheetah is like is tracking it, you know, right? Because like her, her, her body and her mind are like, like so in sync. Like her head is really at this point just like a, like a tracking, you know, system. You know, and so, so even though the body is like, you know, like, the, you know, it's like the, the engine, the, the, you know, the engine room is down here, and it's like just like motoring full on, can't see anything. You know, she's like a, she's like a naval warship, like in action. That's, that's the kind of stuff that goes through my head when I'm like, <laughs> like doing this. <laughs> I might be the first person ever to have just compared a cheetah to a naval warship, but uh, I don't know. It works in my mind. Okay, so now uh, I worked a little bit on the pelvis. I brought the pelvis up. The pelvis looks better to me. And I'm going to go back a little bit to my, my skull shape here. At some point in time, I use my uh, I use my my ruler as a tool all the time uh, for 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 running like big sort of lines down something. You can kind of rotate it like that, and so it could be a center line on something pretty nicely. But as I mentioned before, you know the uh, but now the this 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 ruler is for forever tarnished. It should never touch paper ever. It's only used for making center lines and for measuring clay objects. Let's see, let's sort of work this shape out here. So again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing a cheetah skull. Right? I'm doing an, a head abstraction. You know, you can almost imagine. It's almost like you know, you're you're making up your own sort of like, 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 um, like Loomis abstraction for a cheetah. You know, or like a, a Riley method. Right. So if you know any of those kind of like those those drawing methods where you have a specific set of abstractions. You know, but because, um, well, I don't know if Loomis ever worked with cheetahs before, but I'm just gonna. I'm just going to go from it because I've never seen a Loomis cheetah. Uh, just because I, um, I'm going to go from that kind of premise um, that uh, that Loomis never did a cheetah. I'm kind of making up my own sort of Loomis style cheetah abstraction at the same time. So just looking for that kind of the overall sort of pieces. Because I can go back and I can look at that, um, you know, at the skull, right? And I can see that it has a a sort of large sort of zygomatic section that kind of comes up here and then comes down. And I'll put that on this side as well. Right? But it comes up here. Right? So I get kind of a, a shape that kind of goes there. Right? And then the nose kind of sort of you know, comes down in this cool shape here. Right? And, and, and ultimately that's kind of hard to see, but I'm, I'm, I'm going for you know, some, some form of symmetry. Right. That's some form, so, you know, some amount, I should say, of symmetry as I kind of work on this. Let me bring the cranium back to like a little sort of point there, right? And then fuse that with my, my spine shape that's kind of in here. Work over here on my neglected side. Yeah. And look, 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 this is that. This is one more. Like, look at how loved 
this side looks and how unloved. Look at that, guys. I got armature still popping through here. I got some flatness on my um, on my rib cage that I'm not really digging on. I got to kind of bring some of these bottom areas down a little bit and bring the top sections up a little bit or out. Fill this belly in a little bit more. And in doing that also, I'm going to get a chance to get over it. See how this is wobbling a little bit? And that's just, that's because I'm working pretty aggressively on, um, on that other side. And so it's kind of pulling some of that away. And right? so I can get that to you know, squish the clay down. And it's not that the armature is not moving. It's that the clay around there is moving around the armature. Now this is not the full gesture just yet, all right? I'm still just, I'm massing out the primary forms. I'm using this extra stuff to lock them together because I logistically um, just need, I need that structure in there. All right. oh, there we go. This, this section down here, this, what, this, cam, this section that you're seeing here is this leg goes up in like that. And that leg needs to be coming a little bit more kind of out of here. Right, so I'm going to kind of bring that kind of up more a little bit here. But these sections here, um, because I don't, I don't want this to be a problem, because I, I want to be able to express the, the skinniness of my chita uh, as, as need be. I'm going to make sure that that's in. zoned out a little there uh, uh, just kind of working along um, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna call that and, and, and wrap that up for today uh, I think I have successfully uh, established the three major forms um, I'm quite happy with them uh, I might tweak them around and move them a little bit and so you see I clearly have a rib cage I have a pelvic form and I have a head they're nicely connected by um, uh, a basic sort of form representing the spine. And as I said, I, got, I have some extra in here. That's really just to kind of hold it in place. All right, and uh, I'll tweak that a little bit more. Um, we did not do uh, anything with the scapula just yet. You know, so in terms of like how this looks in comparison to what I'm seeing here, the, the spine moves smoothly, but this, um, this section is going to be uh, broken up because that all that pressure is on those, on those scapula as, as she's running, and so that's gonna be like popping up. So we'll get a really nice kind of bump over in, uh, in these sections here. Right. See you next time.